Warzone 2.0 is finally here. I feel like we've been waiting a long time for this, don't you? In honor of the new game, I decided to build a themed PC that would have no problems playing it and incorporate a few 2.0 design cues. Want to see how it turned out? Ooh, what a mystery we have here. What's behind the cloth? Well, it's actually a towel. And you're probably thinking, just show the PC already. Before I reveal the PC, I wanna tell you about the parts that are inside of it. I went with an Intel processor for this build and I chose last generation. These are quite a bit cheaper. You can find the motherboards for considerably less money and you can use DDR4 RAM if you want. All that cost savings is a plus in my book. The CPU I use for the build is the i5-12600K. It has 10 cores and 16 threads with a max turbo frequency of 4.9 gigahertz. This is using Intel's new hybrid CPU architecture, which is a combination of performance and efficiency cores on one CPU die. This is great for any up and coming gamer or streamer. The CPU is cooled by water with an EK240 AIO. These liquid coolers score great in thermal testing when they came out, and it has some nice RGB lighting to show off the build. The motherboard I paired with the 12600K is the ASUS Tough Gaming Z690 Plus Wi-Fi. I've gone with the DDR4 version to save some money. Just know with 12th or 13th gen Intel processors, you can use DDR4 or DDR5 RAM if you want. But using DDR5 costs considerably more money and it really doesn't give you that much of a performance gain, at least in gaming. Speaking of RAM, I used four 8 gigabyte sticks of G-Skills Trident Z RGB, totaling 32 gigabytes. I enable the XMP profile of 3200 megahertz for all benchmarks. Storage is the Samsung 980 Pro NVMe SSD. This is a blazing fast PCIe 4.0 drive with up to 7,000 megabytes per second sequential read speed and 5,000 megabytes per second sequential write. I went with the one terabyte model since games such as Warzone can take up quite a bit of space these days. The case is the Fantex Eclipse G360A. This is an ATX sized chassis that includes tempered glass and three ARGB fans mounted in the front. This is my first time using the case, so I was curious how the thermals and the build process would be. Supplying power to this build is the Corsair RM850X. This is a fully modular 80 plus gold rated power supply. It also comes with a 10 year warranty. I decided to use custom cables in this build too. I went with Cable Mods Pro ModFlex extension cables in black and white. All this power for the graphics card is welcome, but not really necessary. I went with the ASUS ROG Strix RTX 3070 OC. This is my favorite 30 series cooler design, even though it is huge. The Strix cards look so good. The only thing I worry about is the eight gigabytes of VRAM, but I don't have anything bigger, so I work with what I've got. I'm gonna run a short build montage if you wanna see how this thing came together. If not, feel free to use the chapters down below to skip ahead to the benchmarks. I don't mind, but remember, the reveal is in the montage. Let's go.
Okay, time for some benchmarks. Obviously, I had to run Warzone 2.0 because that's the whole reason for this build. I ran all my tests at 1440p resolution, by the way. I decided to skip out on 1080p because honestly, if you're spending this much money on a build, you should probably get a 1440p monitor. First, I used the native render scale, which runs the game at 100% resolution. Then I enabled DLSS and retested. The results you see are a three run average using the recommended preset, which is almost max settings with this build. Also, no ray tracing was used. The native 1440p results are subpar if you ask me, coming in at 84 FPS average and 50.2 for the 1% lows. Now turning on DLSS to balanced, bumped those numbers up quite a bit to the tune of 121 FPS with 72 as a 1% low. Much better results using DLSS if you ask me. And honestly, I couldn't tell the difference between native and DLSS, so I feel like it's just a free performance bump. I didn't only test Warzone. I also chose a couple other popular games that people are playing. Fortnite happens to be one of the top 10 played games right now on PC. This game also has a DLSS type of upscaling technology, so again, I ran a native test and an upscaled run. Natively, the Warzone build achieved 129.6 FPS average with an 82.3 1% low. Using the quality upscaling setting, nets 183 average FPS and 88.4 for the 1% low. So much better average FPS numbers, however the 1% lows really didn't change a whole lot. Now remember, this is a 3 run average, I am jumping into Battle Royale games with Warzone 2.0 and Fortnite. So obviously it's gonna be different every run, but that is the average between three of the games that I played. Overwatch 2 is the next one up. Of course this PC can run Overwatch. It ran it quite well, to the tune of 175.5 FPS average and 128.5 for the 1% lows. This was on epic settings in case you were wondering. Now Overwatch doesn't have any kind of DLSS function, but honestly, why would you need it? Because 175 FPS average is enough to max out my monitor anyways. I have 165 Hertz, 1440p display. So 175 is just fine for me. And our next title doesn't have DLSS either. Of course, I had to save the best for last, Apex Legends. The 2.0 saw 162.9 average FPS and 124.8 for the 1% low. Obviously, if it can run over 100 FPS in Warzone, Apex should be a breeze. I only did gaming benchmarks. I didn't do any kind of productivity benchmarks or anything like that because really, gaming is all what this channel is focused on. Now, that's why I kind of went with the Intel processor for this build because you've got your performance and your efficiency cores and I used an NVIDIA graphics card not only because of Team Green with the green Warzone build, but it's got the NV encoder in it so it's great for streaming as well. This build can be used as a build guide if you want to do something at home that can handle Warzone and honestly really anything you want to throw at it, this thing can do it. And it's upgradable too because it's got that 850 watt power supply, it can handle almost any GPU and any CPU combo. I absolutely love how this build turned out visually. I think the green really gives it that Warzone 2.0 feel. And honestly, if I had unlimited money and unlimited parts, I probably would have gone with a 13900K instead of a 12900K and something like a 3080. But like I said, we work with what we've got. If you enjoyed today's video, give me a like down below and subscribe for more PC related content. And if you want more in-depth reviews on some of these parts I used today, I'll leave some videos over here that you might find entertaining next. And as I always say, I'm Danny with Danny's Tech Channel and I'll see you in the next video. Yeah, I'm watching the rise, and I wouldn't say I'm shocked cause I'm hardly surprised. This one's for the ride, this one's for who knew.